Hey, I'm Jonathan, and I thought we would kick off our new year together by playing a game of hide and go seek. I'll go first. Um, Jonathan? Wait, they're still cleaning up from Christmas! Jonathan, I found you. <laughs> All right, you did pretty good. Best two out of three? N no, we need to- Do it! Let's go! Oh. Hang on. Come find me. We have to do my kids. Wait. <sighs> Let's just see what our memory verse is for this month. Hey, I'm Riley. This month, we have a new memory verse for you. It's Proverbs 2, 6. The Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. Now, a couple months ago, I challenged you to do the memory verse in a crazy accent. And I figured since we just celebrated Christmas last month, we should do our best Grinch voice. All right, try it with me. The Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. Proverbs 2 says. Awesome. Thank you for doing the memory verse with me. You're getting good at this. Great, can we? Play another round? No. Of course we can. No. I can just get over this. Let's go. I'll go find him. You go worship God.
Jonathan, I see you. Isn't this game fun? Yeah. Can we focus on my kids now? Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Uh, today we're going to be hearing a story from the Bible about a three-day-long game of hide-and-seek between a kid and his parents. Here's Story Lab for more. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I just learned how to do one side of a Rubik's Cube. That's awesome. Can you show us? Sure. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, I had it. Uh, I have no idea. Oh, of course it's in the book bag. Uh, Sorry, I can't find it. It's okay, you're not the only one. What, you've lost a Rubik's Cube too? No, I mean you're not the only one who loses stuff. I read the average person loses up to 3,000 things in their life. That's like the opposite of knowledge. I even found a quiz for us, let's go. About losing stuff? Welcome to What Have You Got To Lose? What is happening? You have 20 seconds to correctly answer the following question. I didn't even study. It's supposed to be fun. We use our phones. Question one. The average kid loses seven items a month. What top five things do kids lose? Uh, oh, jacket. Uh, shoes. <laughs> Remote. Homework. Uh, a stuffed animal. Gloves. Uh, snacks. <laughs> oh, come on. Lunchbox. A backpack. I didn't even get anything right. I guess I'm just really awesome at losing stuff. Question two. On average, how much time do people spend each day searching for misplaced items? Wait, 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 do we both answer? I don't know, how much time do you spend looking for stuff? Last week I was like 20 minutes late to school looking for my homework. And it's, um, okay, I usually find my stuff in like two minutes. So in between two minutes and 20 minutes, 10 minutes? Okay, seven minutes. Uh, or 10. Or seven. Fine, seven. Okay, we answer seven minutes. The correct answer is C, Ugh. 10 minutes. I had it. Sorry. But wow, if most people spend 10 minutes a day looking for lost stuff, that means that's two and a half days a year totally wasted. <laughs> two and a half days I could be napping. We're yeah. playing row builder. Okay, <laughs> we're one for two. Final question. Forgetfulness can be a sign that you are busy, distracted, or tired. But forgetfulness can also be a sign of what? I bet forgetfulness is a sign of intelligence. Oh, you just want losing stuff to mean you're smart. Oh, but it's like your mind is so full of other awesome stuff, you can't remember little things, like your phone. I guess you could be right. Well, if losing stuff is a sign of intelligence, then I am intelligent, and you should definitely trust my answer. You know what? There's some backwards logic there, uh, but... Time's almost up. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Our answer is C, intelligence. C is correct. Yes! Two out of three. Thank you for playing. What have you got to lose? Oh, we just lost some time. Well, that's better than the main characters in today's story. They lost some fun. Whoa. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So, at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. But Jesus didn't stay a little baby. He started to grow. Which is where our story starts. Let's take it away. Hey, everyone. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. As Jesus grew up, he had to learn stuff, just like we do. He had to learn how to walk and talk, how to put on his own sandals, how to grip a stone to toss it in the creek. And as he grew older, 
Jesus learned how to help his mom with chores and how to fit together smooth boards in his dad's carpentry shop. And every year, Jesus and his family joined other Jewish people traveling the long, dusty road to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Now, this trip would have taken at least four or five days. Think about it. No car, no bus. That was nearly a week walking every day, all day. But it was a special time, too. Jesus was able to run and play with other kids during the trip, and they all camped out under the stars. At last, Jesus and his family reached the city, along with thousands of other people. They likely stayed with family or friends to celebrate for the whole week, and they shared a special meal together on the very last evening. As they ate roast lamb, they remembered and retold the story of how God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt. Why do we eat this meal every year? We were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord took us out from there with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. <sighs> the next morning, Jesus' family packed up and joined the crowds flowing back out of Jerusalem. Jesus knew when they were leaving, so his parents expected he would just travel with a group and join them when they stopped to camp as usual. But in the evening, Jesus did not turn up. Have you seen him this afternoon? I haven't seen him since we left Jerusalem. I thought he was ahead of us with Eli's family. Hmm. Has anyone seen Jesus? Mary and Joseph hurried through camp, checking with all their friends and family. A sick feeling settled in their stomachs as they began to realize, somehow, Jesus had been left behind in Jerusalem. The trip back to Jerusalem must have seemed endless. Mary and Joseph were already exhausted, and their imaginations were working overtime. What if he got hurt? He could have been knocked down by a Roman chariot. Th th those soldiers don't care who's in their way. When Mary and Joseph finally reached Jerusalem, again, they searched everywhere for their son. We already checked with all the cousins. M maybe he's in the market. No one had seen Jesus since the day before. Uh, Mary and Joseph must have been sick with worry by the third day when they thought to look in one last place. He loves to study the scriptures. Uh, what about the school at the temple? Mm, but that's for scholars and teachers. Still, Mary and Joseph decided to look just to be certain. Sure enough, when Mary and Joseph hurried into the temple courtyard, they saw a group of teachers. Joseph. That's Jesus, right in the middle. They're actually letting him talk. Now, we don't know exactly what Jesus discussed with the teachers, but they were all amazed at how much he understood and at the wise answers he gave to their questions. As soon as Mary saw Jesus, she rushed to him. Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been worried about you. We have been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? See, Mary and Joseph had been so stressed out that they'd forgotten what the angel told them more than 12 years before, that Jesus is God's son. It made complete sense for Jesus to be in the temple, but Mary and Joseph still didn't fully understand. Jesus returned to Nazareth with his parents. He loved them deeply and obeyed them, and Mary kept everything that had happened in her heart like a secret treasure. As Jesus continued to grow, he became both wiser and stronger, and he found more and more favor with God and the people around him. The end. I'm pretty sure I'd be grounded for a year if I went missing for three days. Yeah, but Jesus did have a really legit reason to stay behind in the temple. Well, first and foremost, Jesus is God's son, right? And Jesus knew that listening to God and learning more about God was the very most important thing that he could do even though it was hard to understand for Joseph and Mary. So, what's our part in the story? Learning about God can seem like just one more thing to check off. But discovering God is so much more. God is the creator of the entire universe, yet God wants to have a relationship with you. When you read scripture or memorize a verse, God can speak to you through those words. You can also learn about God when you talk to people who follow God or read things they've written. You can start small. Pick one verse to read every day for a week. Or ask an adult to help you choose a devotional book, and that can help you discover so much more. And here's the awesome thing. The more you learn about God and the more you start to know God, the more you want to discover. Ah, 
God is so big. There's no end to what you can learn and know about him. I think you guys have the picture. See you next time. So here's the thing. Knowing God is the most important thing. Do you think God can help me find my Rubik's Cube? I think the eyes God gave you can help you find it. Where? Okay, I'll help you. Right now you're cold. Okay. Colder. Warm. Warmer. Warmer. Hot. Burning! Oh, there Woo! it is! <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Okay, so you start like this. Anytime you hear a story from the Bible, there are three questions you should ask. First, what does this story show me about God? The story of Jesus in the temple shows that God wants you to get to know him and that God can be known. Second, what does this story show me about me? Well, the most important thing that Jesus did was to learn about God. So the most important thing that you can do, yes, even more important than school or sports or chores, is to learn about God too. And finally, what should I do now? Start learning about God. You can try reading the Bible or spending time at church, learning about God from Met Kids and asking lots and lots of questions about God. In fact, let's freak out your parents a little bit. Think of a question right now about God and ask your parents or trusted adult about it today. Oh, and adults, remember, it's totally okay to be like Jesus and say, uh, I don't know the answer to that, but let me find out by asking someone at Met. Okay, that's it from me. I'll see you next week and have fun asking questions about God.